Welcome to Songcatcher right here on Radio Adelaide on digital online and 101.5 FM. I'm Claire here with Adrian and Clayton. And wow, what a great song to lead in with. I think it's a rocking night. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. So, have we got rock people here? Well, rocky people. <laughs> rocky. Rocky and bull. Rocky people. one, rocky. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome along, uh, Mark Simpkin. Hi, how and, are you? And Susie, Susie Craig. Craig. Thank you very much. Thank and, you very much for having us on the and show. And to, together with a few other bods, you become moss. Yes, we do. So Rolling Stone kind of style moss, perhaps, That's or something, well, something like a, that. I was a big fan, and and uh, when uh, when the I think Sue threw the name moss up, and being a fan of the Rolling Stones, I thought Rolling Stone gathers no moss. I'll I'll buy into that. Hmm. So uh, uh, it's been that ever since. I wish there was a, an interesting rationale behind the name, but there's not. <laughs> That's it. That's Next it. question. Well, Mark's read the story into it. That's <laughs> yeah. all right. We yeah. could make something up. Like, <laughs> no, it works for us. Green, yeah. green fuzzy things came into our head one night. Now, the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might skip past that bit while we're on air. <laughs> yeah. green, green, green fuzzy things. I'm going to have to make up a story for the next interview, I think. Mm. Yeah. Never mind. Um, now, an, an Adelaide band with, I understand, no apologies for the for the 70s sound. No, so no. is it something that stays with you from back then or something you've discovered oh. since? What, I what think is... it's organic. Sorry, Mark. I, yeah. yeah, I think it's organic, especially with Mark. Mark does most of the composing or just about all of the composing. And, uh, and as somebody put it recently, it's an unapolo- unapologetic hat tip to the 70s and it really does resonate through. I mean, you, you, as you guys know, when you're writing music, it comes from somewhere. You, you've got no idea where it comes from, but it just sort of falls in your lap. And if you noodle around long enough, something comes to you. Mm. Well, you've had a, a very uh, rich experience in playing um, around town. Probably we could devote the whole night's <laughs> interview to uh, <laughs> talk about some of the bands that you've played in. But yeah. clearly you've, uh, you've developed some influences from that, which you would oh. be carrying through to yeah, absolutely. when it comes to turning around to write your own songs. Well, all, all those years um, you know, playing corporates, cabarets, pubs, you know, um, the 80s was a very vibrant time, as many mu- Adelaide musicians would remember. I think I was working five, six nights a week constantly for that decade and from big bands to to uh, pub bands and 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 so on in between so you're playing such a wide um, range of music and music styles that something's conditioning you there quietly along the way you know and, and of course now you know things just uh, just fall out but you weren't writing a lot at those, sta- in oh, those I, days this is something no. that's come later it was always an aspiration but you know it, i guess um, life sort of takes you in other directions and at this point in my life uh, you know, uh, it was about nearly two years ago we actually made the decision to We were a cover band yeah, about we're, four we're, years we're Moss doing, was a cover band, we did play a lot of Rolling Stones and, um, okay. Well doing anything that pubs wanted us to do and you, you're doing the one, two, three nights a week you know, whatever comes your way and and, um, and we thought no, you know, if we don't do it now you're always going to think we should have so, mm-hmm. so we pulled back and started and mm-hmm. uh, so yeah. you'd, you'd earned your first million as a cover band, so it was time to <laughs> do, do it on the skids from yeah. here on. Yeah, yeah in our own Checks lunch in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and, it, and you have a new EP to, to show for it. Yes, yeah, we're very proud of it. Um, so Face the Music. Face the Music, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a serendipitous journey, I suppose. Um, we wrote these songs and, and we did record Bell last year um, and... Um, then we started writing a few more and we're performing them, getting, uh, you know, I, I guess your test market things to see how they're going down and whether people are appreciating what songs they like and what songs they don't. And, um, you know, we, we spent an afternoon at uh, Mixmaster Studio with uh, Mick Wordley and and um, pretty much um, you know, put a lot of the stuff down, one, two, three, four, so, go. So an afternoon you know, got, got most of that six tracks done. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good work. And then with the uh, the uh, skillful um, attention to that from uh, fellas like Sean Timms and Gabs Agostino, um, they got the uh, the double cut polish out there and, and <laughs> gave gave it a wax and shine and and um, and. Cause All while you were having afternoon tea. Yes. Yes. 
Sean was always good with the coffees. <laughs> That's afternoon tea in these uh, custom Moss beer coasters, I presume. Yes. But this the is beer, beer coolers, I should say. This is part of our merchandise. Um, on the, the, the cover of our CD, we, we talk about... Um, wading in deep waters and that's what we do we talk about all sorts of social and political issues and uh, we've got t-shirts and uh, we've got all of those things but we also have stubby holders and on one side it's got the moss logo face the music and the other it says real men don't hit women so we're actually putting these stubby holders in the hands of men there you go there you to, go and, and reminding them <laughs> reminding them when they drink beer because often yes. alcohol of course leads to well, that's yes. exactly. That's in fact, one of our songs. Mitigating factor. Yeah, yeah, one of our songs is very much about that drug and alcohol induced mm. violence, um, uh, Mr. Hyde. We'll talk about that one later. But f- firstly, the song that we first heard, which was "Days Like These," can you tell us a bit about that song? Sure. Um, Mark composed the music "Days Like These," and uh, I wrote the lyrics. And um, I guess out of all of the uh, the songs that are on this uh, EP, "Days Like." These would reflect my life, mostly. People do ask about that. And I guess when you're a mature age person, um, we all have stories to tell. And everybody I've met in life at my age, we all have a story to tell. And, and quite often that they're sad stories. Um, days like these, I've had a wonderful life. I've got two beautiful children who just support me fabulously. That They're, they're great young adults, children 27 and 28, Emma and Alex. You're just saying that because they're listening. They are, no, they're not probably not listening. They're doing better things in their life. But they've been yes, very they supportive. That they've seen their mother um, all their life. They've seen their, their mum. Uh, I've been a singer-songwriter most of my life. Um, and, uh, in fact, the first song I wrote about when I was about 13 was when my girlfriend broke up with her boy, Terry. But anyway, that's another story. And I've been tinkering around. And like most people, you know, we have a family. I've, I've had my own business and uh, we have day-to-day lives. And, um, uh, and people with a creative passion, it keeps tugging at them. And... Um, uh, like I said, I had a fantastic life. I've got a beautiful family. And about uh, five years ago, I lost my late husband, Derek Craig, to motor neuron disease. And motor neuron disease is a uh, disease of the central nervous system. And prior to passing, Derek was very sick for about three years. And I cared for him. And um, uh, and then my, ch- my after his passing, my, my children, you know, had their own, made their own homes. And, and I woke up one, one day completely on my own and... Um, uh, as I said, I've been a singer and songwriter on and off, but mainly in um, you know open mic nights and things like that, nothing terribly seriously. And from the day of my late husband's diagnosis, I didn't listen to music, I didn't listen to the radio, I didn't play my guitar, I didn't write. So music was just pushed right to the background because music is such a very powerful thing. It reminds you of those times. You know, we, we reflect on all the, the, the decades and our teenage years and what have you. When a song comes up, it kind of reminds you straight puts you right back in that place. So I didn't want to listen to music. I didn't want to be reminded of this very sad time. And it was a few months after Derek's passing that I accidentally twanged my guitar. And uh, it sounded quite good and it was, it was quite a, a, a defining moment. Do I leave it or do I pick it up? So it's, it's a bit like getting back on your horse, I guess. So I picked it up, I started playing my guitar and it was lovely. And uh, one of the lyrics in days like these is the music's died, I was black inside. And um, and that's that's what that's all about. But having gone through that and um, and also a brush with cancer myself, like I guess a lot of people our age have had a brush with cancer about a decade ago. Um, one of the lyrics is, I, "Now I dare to breathe deeper than I ever did before," and I, I think that's what it is. And when things happen to you in your life, you are a product of what happens to you, whether you make mistakes uh, or whether bad things happen. And I. And those things are only meaningful if you take them and, uh, and turn them around to something positive and honour that. And so, um, yeah, I, I unashamedly breathe deeper than I ever did before. And that's what Days Like This is all about. Mm. And while we're going to be featuring quite a bit of Face the Music, which is a, an EP that is released, six tracks, and which we've heard the first track of, the music keeps on coming. <laughs> and we're going to uh, take some tracks from a brand new demo that's starting to take place. So we're going to listen now to Start Thinking. Now, would somebody like to do a very brief introduction? Yes. Um, start thinking music-wise, because the, the person that ne- need not be forgotten and must not be forgotten here is uh, our keyboard player, Clive, who, who also assists in the music writing. And, um, yeah, Clive and I sat down one day, and I, you, you'll hear the opening chord on this one. I was just making noises on my guitar and 
and we came up with the opening chord and then Clive started to do things on the piano and the product of all that is what you're about to hear. Of course, Sue putting the words and, and it's interesting. Like we'll, it was an we'll eerie up, tune. It was eerie. We'll, we'll come mm. up with the, with, the, with the music and then sometimes we don't know what the subject matter is. So we put the music on the shelf and then there'll be an inspiration. Sue says, I reckon that one will go with this story and that's what you're going to hear now. Well, it's very topical. It's about um, the notion that Australia becomes the dumping grounds for the world's spent uranium. And uh, look, I, I know very little about this. I, I, I try to learn as much as I can. I don't. I think we're kept in the dark. I think a lot of what's going on is propaganda. Um, we have a fabulous uh, agricultural industry. We are currently known as a food bowl for Asia. We could fast become the, the food bowl for the rest of the world. And what a mo more beautiful way to make a living than being a, a, a uranium dump. So th this is about start mm. thinking. And I wrote this song about a person in the future talking to us today saying, just start thinking, you know, just start thinking about the ramifications of this. And I, I've used two very poignant um, Australian songs. One is the Australian National Anthem. And I've manipulated the words in the anthem as part of the bridge. And uh, the other, of course, is our adopted national anthem, Walsing Matilda. And, uh, and if you listen to the song, it's Walsing Matilda doesn't dance here anymore. And, uh, and the bridge talks about um, uh, in history stage, did you blot the page or did you advance Australia fair? Mm. So they resonate.
And you're listening to Songcatcher here on Radio Adelaide. And we were just listening to Start Thinking, 2016 demo track from our feature act tonight, which is Moss. And uh, we have Mark and we have Susie in from Moss. Perhaps you should introduce us. We've heard a little bit about Clive, the keyboard player. He helps yes. with the composition. But who else is in the band? Okay, well... Um We've just got a new bass player, a lovely chap called Graham Knowles. Um, Graham helped us quite a, a great deal with those two new, uh, the two new tracks you're going to play tonight. Uh, Start thinking, and the next one, Ode to the Seventies, and uh, David White, our drummer, and that makes the five of us. So five-piece rock band, as you can probably hear, listening to those tracks, hmm. featuring Susie's lyrics and voice. Mm-hmm. fairly new to this whole thing. We were hearing about how you went past your guitar and mm-hmm. twanged it mm-hmm. and decided to pick it up, and mm-hmm. that's kind of led to all sorts of things. It certainly has. Um, when I decided to get into music, like I said, I was, I was home alone. I mean, I still obviously um, very connected so to my children. So home alone in the sense that the kids had yeah, yeah, the flown respond- the coop Yeah, flown the coop. And so, okay, what now? And... Um, and joined a music club, and that's where I met Mark. And uh, so, what music club did you join? It's called as a club in Adelaide called Weekend Warriors. It's for people who mm-hmm. either were musicians and have let it go and come back to it, or people like myself who kind of tinkered around with it and finally have got their teeth into it. And that's that's how I mm-hmm. uh, come to be in the band. And it's it's kind of been an avalanche. Um, we as a cover band were gigging just about every weekend and sometimes twice a weekend and it was exhausting and uh anyway mark was waiting for me to sort of say enough uncle (laughs) and i finally did because of course mark's been playing for so so long in fact he first started playing his tennis racket on the bed at the age of 12 that's how far he (laughs) goes back before that (laughs) um (laughs) so yeah it's just been it's just been relentless but ah i'm just loving it just absorbing it and being um, my bent has always been acoustic guitar and, and, and songwriting, so um, we made the decision. Look, let, let's give this a crack and uh, and let's take it and see where it goes. And it's just been uh, just a wonderful process. Just the writing itself. Once I half of the the, the songwriting is you research, and um, and of course you draw on your own life's experience, and uh, and then once you've got a foothold on what you want to talk about. Then, uh, then it just comes tumbling down. And when I write, I, li- I, I like, don't like to be too cryptic and I don't like to be too obvious because if you kind of straddle that line somewhere in between, what happens is people kind of pick up on what's this all about and it gives them op- an opportunity to work it out themselves. And when that happens, they become more connected with the story. I find that too. If I'm trying to, you know, if I hear something that's a little bit cryptic but um, not too difficult to get my head around, you kind of work it out yourself, and you 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 sort of, it's a stronger hold that you've got on the story. Mm. So, does it take the band long to work it out? No, you 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 know when a a song's. In fact, uh, uh, I've been playing with these guys long enough to know that. I know that song will work. Yeah, you just know your band, and 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 uh, and every one of these, you, you put it in front of them. Within minutes, it's going. And yeah. and for every for every one that that has got to the finals, uh, there's probably two or three that haven't. And so you know, I've either nuked them before I've even taken them to the band because, yeah, I know that they're not going to work. It's not well, going to be a band song, is, is yeah. You just you just know it. You can feel it, and, and others you you put in there, and you think, oh god, I'll go to sleep if you know we do that. So, so um, yeah, I'll haul that one out, and, and of course the filtration system, you know, and as I said before, you you try stuff, uh, you know, to live audiences, and you you see, you know, what feet are tapping, heads bobbing, people dancing, yeah, you know, what what are the reactions? And well, mm. t- time's getting on, so we're going mm-hmm. to get to the second track of um, mm. the current little demo, yes. actually. Yes. Well, little demo, full yes. band, yes. quite nicely recorded. Probably the only thing that hasn't been mastered onto a CD. That's probably the only thing it's mm-hmm. missing, in fact, from what well, I've heard in the first track. But That's the skills of our bass player, Graham Knowles. He's, uh, he's very clever, and, and uh, we did this at his place. Okay, so the next one is Ode to the 70s, yes. which probably speaks for itself. Yep. Yeah.
We've been bopping around to O to the 70s, <laughs> thanks to Moss and thanks to Susie's yeah. great vocals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, had to go some yeas in. The crowd goes wild. Now, you had a couple of things you wanted to Yeah, just to very quickly, O to the 70s. Yeah. We, we heard that and we thought, yeah, that's just a, a rocky 70s thing. And um, four fantastic things happened in the 70s. Um, the abolition of um, uh, conscription to Vietnam. Uh, the abolition of um, the white Australia policy and the start of recognition of land rights for Indigenous Australians. And the fourth thing was the most amazing Australian bands that just erupted in that time. And so we've kind of um, uh, paid tribute to those bands. That was that interesting period of time when Australian commercial radio and television actually played Australian music. They did. Uh, Well, What what an alien kind of landscape that must have been. Tell that to the kids of today and they won't believe you. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. Speaking about about the kids of today and yesterday, uh, Mark from Moss started music at about age 11, evidently tuning his tennis racket, as Susie's alluded to Uh, early. And how did that sound? Playing air tennis racket. It it had a very woody and dull sound. Nylon nylon strings. (laughs) Six string, was it? Yeah, no, it was about 100. (laughs) But anyway... (laughs) More like a half. Yeah, it was a... His mum told me that, and he used to bounce on the bed jumping up But very soon after that, with a young band called In Pack, playing Mm. Hey Hey It's Saturday. Yes, that was... um, that was an extraordinary time, and as you imagine, in the 70s, 
We, we, there used to be shows like uh, uh, Willy Weedy Stars of Tomorrow, Hey Hey. Uh, so this uh, is an example of commercial radio and television actually supporting local music. Absolutely. Use- mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and, um, yeah, we were, we were on Stars of Tomorrow quite regularly and, and when we, we turned 15, we were asked to be resident on Adelaide's version of Hey Hey at Saturday with a chap called Dean Davis. And so every Saturday, Mum and Dad drove us all into Channel 9 and we spent the whole day introducing HR Puff and stuff and all the cartoons. And we'd, you know, I'd bring friends in from school and interview them. And, <laughs> and we had to play two songs a, a week. And, uh, and it was an extraordinary time. And as you imagine, as a, a still in high school and, and uh, you're seen on TV every week, you know, it, it, you know, it was uh, everywhere you went, you, you, you were stopped and spoken to. And, it was a it was a terrific time for us, and mm. Mm. and that led to what sounds to have been a, a, a busy few decades yes. in cover bands. Well, it, um, as school finished, we morphed into um, rock and roll bands. Uh, we did a number of uh, years doing the town halls. One of the most extraordinary quick stories is that only in the last couple of months uh, we're playing up in the Riverland at a, a music festival and just as I'm about to go on stage a hand went on my shoulder I turned around and there's the the guitarist I went to school with that was in my rock bands in the 70s had tracked me down and and we ended up playing at his 60th birthday and and uh, had a wow of a time and we're you know being reconnected again it's just you know massively good thing um, and uh, of course after rock I then spent some time in country and of course, you may remember back then, 5KA became um, um, a, a dedicated to country music for about a year. But it was a time in Adelaide when country music really boomed. Uh, it, it didn't get enough under my skin, uh, and I moved over into, um, uh, I guess, you know, more mainstream um, uh, cabaret and pub music. But uh, we then morphed. I was in a band called the Beat Boys, and and um, we morphed into um, a band that was doing. You know, we had a, a pretty strong book of uh, uh, corporate work back then, and and had the great honour of um, it, it, towards the end of my time with them um, uh, playing the Lord Mayor Street Party in King William Street for Steve Condus back then, which is a tremendous thrill. And um, and then I took a year. It, my son was born, so I, I I gave it a rest for a while and. Do it. And then came back with <laughs> with with your mate uh, Alan Waller, uh, who, who, dear soul, who's not with us anymore. But um, got together with Alan. We had a band called um, a Peeping Willie, and and, uh, and we did a lot. Uh, the the whole thrust of that was to do um, uh, Bill Haley swing rock, and and um, and we had had three guys from the Police Band with us, and yeah, Tony Lillywhite was keyboards, and you know, it was a fantastically fun band to be in. And, and so really what was it. the turning point for you that said, I've been thinking about original music and now I'm going to do it? Uh, one too many nights in the corner of a pub and I, I just uh, playing somebody else's music. And I, and I thought, well, geez, um, I've been wanting to do this all my life. And you get to this point in your life and you think, if I don't do it now, I don't want to be laying on the, on the slab thinking I wish I did. So... So I thought, no, I'm going to do it, and um, and to the, the beauty was, we yeah we took this to the band and said, you know, this is kind of where we want to go, which meant a cessation of playing regularly, and everyone was cool with it. They said, yeah, no, we, you know, let's do it. And so you took the essentially the band that you had at that point. Yep, came over with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and a lot of and they bring a lot to the songs too. Yeah, you know, you essentially bet. with the songwriters and, and mm. certainly Clive. But when we sort of Put the song down, you know. David puts his bit in, and um, and yeah. so does Graham. It's fantastic. Yeah, you might say, uh, yeah, the, yeah. David, the drummer, will say, well, why don't we stop here and and then build it up there? And yeah, everyone's having a, a, a bit to say. And I and I guess at the end of the day, the final product is something that everybody owns. And Would probably actually lead us into the next song, which I'm mm-hmm. going. You're going to tell me in a minute. Actually, it's completely different. But uh, you're braver than you believe. Yes moving in towards original music, but mm-hmm. obviously it isn't about a step into original music. Braver Than You Believe, it's very topical at the moment. Um, it's a song about domestic violence. And uh, one in three women in Australia are um, assaulted or uh, abused by an intimate partner. And um, it's interesting. Uh, um, it's something that is, is now coming to life and is, is being spoken about. And the song Braver Than You Believe is... is 
is to sort of bring that out into the open and, and empower women to believe that they can move away from this. It, it's something that they don't have to live with. Um, there was a song written by um, Joan Armour Trading. Um, no, Tracy Chapman. Tracy Chapman that, mm. that was called Behind the Wall. And uh, there were some really interesting lyrics in there um, uh, by her. And it was written at the time where the police would attend uh, a, a domestic violence situation but wouldn't do anything about it because, in, in Tracy Chapman's words, the police said to her, well, that's something between a husband and wife and we don't get involved in that. So that's going back to the 70s or 80s where that was truly believed that violence could take place in the home and that was okay, that was their business. But now it's everybody's business and thankfully. So, yeah, braver than you believe.
with Songcatcher, and we were listening to You're Braver Than You Believe just a few minutes ago, and I'd like Susie and Mark to tell us about the cover for this CD. Mm. Just hold it up so the listeners yeah, so can see it. Can, yeah. you see it? <laughs> can you all see it? Well, yes. I'll describe it for your listeners. Um, actually, if you go to mossmusic.com.au, um, you can certainly see it on there if anybody's at their computer now. But we, the front cover is a picture of a woman um, and she does have a, a bruised eye. You can quite clearly see that um, she's not in good shape. And there's a hand coming up, shushing her lips. And if you look at the hand closely... It's the hand of a man, um, and which it's speaks. Hairy. It's, it's hairy, hairy. Mm. which speaks and volumes. And, and this is what <laughs> the domestic all of violence mm. is all about. It's uh, it's about this silent violence that can't be spoken about. And uh, the uh, the amazing thing about getting that was was um, when we, we, we as soon as we saw it, we thought, wow, what a photo! And we tracked down who owned it, and it turned out to be a, a, a domestic violence prevention unit in Portugal. So we wrote to them and, and uh, asked them for their kind permission to use it, and they were very gracious in doing so, and uh, and have since been supportive and promoting um, uh, You're Braver Than You Believe in Portugal, which mm. is lovely to know. Mm. Mm. Bit of an extra plug. Yeah. And when does the Portuguese version come out? <laughs> um, we're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can find some Portuguese speakers to help you along that track. Yeah. Okay, it's come time for the talk about song, which is a bit later tonight, and the TARDIS clock says that we're nearly out of time. But Emily is, mm. well, we've been talking about all of the songs, but uh, Emily is the one you wanted to tell us a little bit about how your song has come together, in particular that one. Well, interestingly, with, with Emily, I, I, I wrote the music to it um, heck, late last year. Um, and it sat on the shelf because, as, as you'll hear when you play it, it's a ballad. Uh, well, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a rock ballad, but, but uh, a slower number. And um, you know, finding the subject matter that fit the music it didn't come uh, quickly. But then Sue Mark and I, I went, you know, we went to see the movie Suffragette. And uh, when we walked out of the theatre, Sue said, i got to write a song about that. I always, uh, Emily yeah. Davidson and, and of course... Uh, that was the obvious piece so of music. So you had a ballad way. piece waiting. Waiting for waiting the in subject the wings, matter. And we both walked. There. I knew about the suffragettes and I knew about Emily Davidson standing in front of the horse. And, and but it's a different thing to see it in front of you in a mm. film, isn't it, if it's mm. well done? Mm. Well, the thing is, if you do look on the internet, you, Emily Davidson was a very smart woman. She was the leader of the suffragette movement in London. She worked out that the um, this was, it was the same time that film was coming was being used and she realised that the King's horse race that, that was going to be running was going to have three cameras positioned on the racetrack and she knew exactly where she she was going to stand to pull this stunt off and uh, so that each of the three cameras were on her and the eyes of the world were on her and that was the turning point. She stood in front of a horse galloping at 55 kilometres an hour. She knew that she wasn't going to you know, walk away from that and uh, she endured countless... Um, times of incarceration, force-fed, all sorts of things. She was just the most amazing woman. And isn't it incredible that somebody back in 18... Oh, I can't remember when it was. No, no nine, nine, 1900s. 1900s did this. And there's people, you know, 100 years later in Adelaide writing about her. So, um, And she deserves to be written about. She deserves to be remembered because she certainly paved the way worldwide for, um, for recognising uh, human rights for women. Uh, of course, in those days were, were quite... I think it's Grim. an incredible selfless act to, to know that, that by doing what I'm about to do will change things, but I'm not going to be here to, yeah. to, to enjoy that change. Well, she didn't there's, do it for there's, her. But there's no guarantee that it will. It's just that you've got yeah. faith in... You've got to try. You've got, mm. you got yeah. a fair idea that it's going to make impact, mm. but you're not... Yeah, it's a, it's a heck of a sacrifice. Mm. Right? So but you've got a great ballad piece of music. Mm -hmm. How long do you wait for it until the right lyric comes along? Um, we're always on alert, aren't we? We're always... Yeah. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, uh, I wasn't impatient with it. Uh, I, I loved the piece of music, but, but uh, yeah, it, it, it would waste it if we, we didn't put it to the right theme. And I think um, talking about the suffragettes was, was the right one for this, this piece of music. So, Okay. Well, with no further ado, because time is ticking, folks, here's mm -hmm. Emily. Thousand 
Well, how do we get in touch with you, okay, you well, Moss people? Well, our website, um, mossmusic.com.au. Uh, you can uh, hear, purchase, hopefully, um, read about us, uh, all, all that sort of stuff. And if you want to see us, um, we'll be at Marook um, in the Riverland playing at Riverstock uh, on Saturday the 12th of November. And they've uh, really uh, rolled out the red carpet because uh, they're going to let us do our full uh, visual show there. So uh, we're looking forward to that one. Uh, we'll be one hour on stage at 11 o'clock on the Saturday night. So we're getting very visual on radio. This is great. Yeah. And, and, yeah, copies of the CD, where can people find that? Um, uh, we'll always have them when we're performing. Uh, we'll be doing a white ribbon show at the Weedy on the 20th of November, uh, but certainly at Riverstock. Um, do yourself a favour and get to Riverstock. Um, and, of course, online. Uh, we, we've got the, the Moss Shop online, so... So we're all geared to go. And T-shirts, holder. stubby holders, you name it. Stay tuned for crossing tracks in just a minute. And don't forget... Oh, I've just got a really quick... Uh, the Gov asked me to say that the uh, the, the the scouts from uh, The Voice are going to be at the Gov Wednesday night at 7 o'clock if anyone's interested. Oh, it's so probably an open mic, I suspect. Don't know. We're leaving you with In Excess of Life. Thanks for coming in. Thank you Thank very you much very for much having us. Uh, it's been Ciao. fun. Appreciate it. Stop when did you throw it away?